So this here is going to be a painting video for some Alpha Legion obliterators. And as you can see, we've just finished them up and they look pretty good. So we'll show you how we did the armor color as well as the um, flesh and the cloths and all of that stuff. Uh, on top of that, because the patterns are the same and the color scheme is the same, we also did a Hellbrute. So as you can see, the color scheme is very similar. They've got the same flesh, they've got the same uh, armor pieces, they've got the same wiring. Uh, the difference is just size. The uh, Hellbrute is considerably larger than the obliterators. And um, so there's a bit more detail there. But we'll show you how we painted up the obliterators. You can just apply it over to the Hellbrute um, pretty much the same way. So if you like the way these models look and you want to see how we painted them up, then feel free to stay tuned and we will show you. Otherwise than that, uh, stay tuned and we'll show you how we painted up the obliterators, which you can easily apply to the Hellbrute. And every once in a while, we'll show you a piece of the Hellbrute as well. The first thing we're going to be doing on our Alpha Legion obliterators is that we primed them and we, what we used was Mechanicus Standard Gray spray paint. So as you can see, we got a good coverage all around. Using the rattle can, we got in and underneath all of the uh, angles and underneath all of the um, arms and appendages. Now, it would have been good to um, keep him in pieces and sub-assemblies and then paint him that way like we did with our previous uh, obliterators. But in this case, we got these already assembled. So we're, um, we're going to have to paint them as they are. So for our first paint that we're going to put onto this model, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Rakar Flesh base paint and we're just going to do all of the skin area as well as all of the bone processes. So all the underneath the arms, underneath these arms, the legs, the back of the legs, the uh, shoulders, uh, all the fleshy bits that are coming out of the back. So we're going to do all of those with Rakar Flesh. Also going to do this skull down here as well as all of the teeth surrounding the... Um, where the helmet goes in here, where the head is. So we'll do all that now and be back here in just a few moments. So this is our model now that we've finished with the Rakarth flesh. And as you can see, we did all of the arms, like we said, as well as all of the bits in the back. Um, all Basically all the fleshy bits that was around. We did both models. And brought them sort of up to the same point. So what we're gonna do now is move on to our next color. So our next step is going to be to add a shade to the models. And with that, we're gonna use some Reekland Flesh Shade. And that's gonna bring out uh, some of the fleshiness here. So we're just going to use that right out of the pot, as you can see, and put it all over everything we've done with the Rackarth Flesh. Don't worry if we make a mess, we're gonna come back and clean up all the armor and all the other parts later. This is the messiest step, that's why we did this one first, and we'll do all the cleanup afterwards. So we'll keep going at this for now, and be back here again in a few minutes. This is our model now that the Reekland Flesh Shade has dried, and as you can see it's really darkened up our um, Rackarth Flesh. So what we're going to do now is a dry brush of some Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to put that on all the higher spots, just like so. And that'll add a little bit of fleshiness to our models. So we'll keep going with that, and we'll be back here in just a few moments once that's all dried and finished. There's our model now that we finished with the Cadian Flesh Tone. And what we're going to do is one more uh, dry brush highlight over that of Kai's Left Flesh, which is notably lighter. So we're just going to dry brush that. Because it's lighter, we're going to use less of it, of course, because it is pretty standout-ish. And we're just going to dry brush that right over all the high points there, as you can see. Once again, it doesn't matter if you make a mess, because we're going to clean up the armor and stuff afterwards. That's why we did this layer, the skin first. So you can see there, it's much lighter than it was before. So we're going to do that for the rest of the model, and then be back here in a few minutes. There's our model now that we finished with all of the fleshy bits. And as you can see, we got a nice uh, several tones to uh, the lighter on the top and deeper in the recesses, which is pretty much what we want for our fleshy bits. So from there, we're gonna move on to our next color. So for our next color, what we're gonna use now is some lead belcher. 
and we're going to use that on all our metallics. So we're going to use that on all of these bolts that are sticking out of the skin here, as well as any of these dials. There's some ammunition and rounds here, as well as some underneath the skin flaps here, as well as a metallic spine, definitely more visible on this model here, as well as any weapons, chain guns, things like that. And then because it's Alpha Legion and our base color of our armor is also lead belcher, we're also going to do all of these armor plates, including the face inside, all of these ones here. So effectively at the end of this, the model will be pretty much colored except for this uh, loincloth here. Mostly everything else will be lead belcher that isn't skin. So we'll do most of that with the lead belcher now. So we're just going to start that lead belcher doing all of these little bolts just like so just like that and as well as all of these armor pieces here as well so we'll do all of that meet back here in a few minutes when all of this is dried and we move on to our next uh, color so this is our model now that the metallic lead belcher is finished and as you can see it's much shinier than it had been before and really stands out compared to the rest of the Mechanicus Standard Grey. So what we're going to do now is add a shade to that. So we're going to take a little bit of Nuln oil and start going through all of the future metallic things. So all of the weapons, any of the cabling, any of the gears and things like that. So all of that stuff will get a little bit of Nuln oil on it just to bring in some of the detail. So just a little bit of new oil like so. And that'll fill in all the barrels as well as all of the uh, flesh metal guns that are here on this model uh, where they break out of the armor. just like so so we'll do that for the rest of the spots and be back in a moment so now the new and oil is finished we did the guns as well as the other gun we did all of the machinery that's in the back here where the legs are the hydraulics as well as the spine going up and any of the weapons coils and things like that all the things that are going to remain metallic when we finish the model so after that, what we're going to do now is add a dry brush of Iron Breaker just to brighten those particular things back up. So we'll just dry brush that right across these metallic weapons. And then once that's done, what we're going to do is move on from there and dry brush on Runefang Steel over all of the armor plates, uh, which will eventually turn to our Alpha Legion color. So we'll do Iron Breaker on the metallics and Rune Fang Steel on the armor plates. And you'll see there's a slight difference in those two colors with the Rune Fang Steel being slightly brighter. So we'll be back here when both of those are done and uh, we'll be ready for our next color. So this is our model now that we finished with the Rune Fang Steel, which is on all of these armor plates, as well as the Iron Breaker, which is on these uh, weapons these ones on the arm and all of the gear in the back here. So that finishes our metallics uh, until we come back later to do the trim. But for now, we're ready to start coloring in the Alpha Legion teal color for our armor. When it comes to doing our armor plates, what we're going to use is a little bit of a Kellyan green first. And all we're going to do is color in each of these armor pieces. avoiding the trim if we can, but we do come back and do that over again later. Um, so we'll do most of that now. It may take two coats, uh, but as a contrast paint, it will fill itself in. So like so. So we'll keep plugging away with this just to give us the color pattern we want. So we'll be back here in a few minutes um, to see how it looks. So this is our model that we finished with the Italian green. And so what we're going to do is our next shade, and this is optional, you could leave it this way if you like. But we're going to go for a little bit more of a green tinge, 
we're going to take some contrast warp lightning and then with it very 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 watered down we're just going to spread some of it on the Kelly in green just like so so what that does is add that green tinge to our armor it makes us definitely more alpha legion just like so so we'll keep going at that till we are finished and we'll be back in a moment so here's our armor now that we've done the warp lighting thing as well and as you can see it's definitely got that greenish sheen and as you rotate it through the light it changes color which is what we were looking for so with our next move what we're going to do now is finish off the armor by doing a little bit of stormhost silver and going over all of the trim all along the edges here just to bring that out a little bit brighter still so we'll do that now and be back in a moment now that the armor is finished we're going to move on from there and we're going to start working on this loincloth here so that's going to be three different uh, colors built up from the bottom so we're going to start with Mephiston red giving it a base coat all over we're going to do a dry brush highlight of evil sun scarlet and then one more edge highlight of wild rider red so we'll do those now and finish off this uh, loincloth cloak while we're at it we'll pick out the two little eyes with Mephiston Red as well and be back in a few moments once all that's finished. So this is our model now that we finished with the loincloth and as you can see we did the base and then the higher up dry uh, edge highlights so we've got pretty much the finished product here so that stands out pretty nicely. So we're going to do the same thing for every little tentacle. See there's one right here and on the other model there's a couple that run uh, around the back um, hydraulics. So what we're going to do with those is we're going to put a little bit of Screamer Pink with an edge highlight of Pink Horror and we're going to do that for all of the tentacles and probably these um, cables as well that are here. Uh, so we'll probably do that now and then be back in a few minutes. So now that we're finished with all of our tubing and all of our wiring, as you can see here, we've done the wires, we've highlighted with the lighter pink, and then we've done the um, metallics just where the wire's coming through. So we finished that up there. We're going to move on to our next color, and in this case, it's going to be Xandri Dust. And what we're going to do with that is take a little bit of it, and on any place where there are horns or teeth, we're just going to give it a coat of that Xandri Dust. Just like so. Don't worry if it gets a little bit sloppy because we're going to come over with a shade of Agrax Earthshade right after that. And we'll tint it all up uh, and create a gradient to it. So we'll do any of the horns on the legs as well as any of the guns, the plasma weapons, anything on the other legs here and there, all the little teeth around the obliterators, and then on a Hellbrood or things like that, we'll probably do some of these horns and things like that over here uh, on the top and on the shoulders and things like that. So any place where you're finding a horn or a bony process sticking out, Xandri Dust and then Agrax Earthshade. Okay, here's our model now that we finished with the Xandri Dust and the Agrax Earthshade. And as you can see, these teeth are standing out much better now, as well as the ones here, as well as the ones on the uh, shin and the thigh and along the top of the armors we also did the skulls and anything else like that we had lying around so from there we're going to move on to another uh, tidbit and what we're going to do is add a little bit of trim in different places with some rune lord brass so we'll probably do sort of the inside track of here maybe a little bit on the bolters some of the key places we're going to do is along the ammunition of the chain guns 
just to add some depth there. Just like that. So we'll do that all around through here. And we'll just touch it up a little bit with the Rune Lord Brass just to um, highlight some areas, maybe the tongue on this face. Either way, we'll be back here in a few minutes after that's done. So now that our Rune Lord Brass is finished, you can see that there's this like color differential between say this Melta and uh, the fist below it and a few other places like that. So from there, we're gonna move on to our next color. What we're gonna do now is work on the plasma turret here. So we're gonna do that one, probably easier to see on a large one, say this um, Hellbrood Fist. So what we're gonna do with both of those is a base color of Cabalite Green, which will fill in all of this area. And then we will put Nulin Oil in all of the grooves so they stand out. And then we'll do a dry brush of Moot Green very lightly over all of this trying not to fill in those holes and then we'll come around with a nurgling green just lightly at the corners there so we'll do that now meet back here in a few minutes and we'll probably leave a link to another video that details exactly how to do this uh, otherwise not we'll see you in a few minutes so this is the final product and as you can see we've finished them up we've also based them and we've clear coated them now, since the last time we were we had a step, we were doing the plasma guns on top of that. What we did was we took a little bit of moot green. And we did all the eyes of Horus here. So there was one located there. There's also one located here. And they both got a uh, gloss coating over them. So they stand out better in the on the tabletop. Now the other thing we did was we finished the plasma guns with a little tiny bit of white scar and then we did some tesseract glow over the top of that as well just to give that some some more bang uh, visibly so you could see it back. So with that uh, we're finished our models we've also finished the Hellbrut and he got pretty much all of the same coloring and all the same pattern as the obliterators did so if you found these videos helpful and you found these color schemes helpful for your Alpha Legion, uh, please feel free to leave a like on the channel, leave a comment, uh, or stay tuned, and we'll show you a few of the other weapons options on the um, Hellbrew here, uh, as well as a few other photos of the Obliterators. So otherwise than that, we will see you at our next painting video, and uh, thank you for tuning in. You guys have a lovely day.